We're talking about parenting right now here at 634, just going through some of these definitions. Helicopter, lawnmower, snowplow, these are all terms for the way some people choose to parent their kids. Now, experts say we could be ruining them as a result, and that's where Carla Navarrete comes in, talking about ways uh, we can turn things around before it is ever too late. Thank you for shining light on this this morning. Yeah, definitely, uh, and it encompasses all age ranges, right, whether it's elementary school, middle school, or high school. And now I want to give you a key word in all of this that I heard over and over, and it's trust. While our kids are growing, and developing, we need to trust that they will make mistakes and that those mistakes will only make them stronger. You may have heard the term helicopter parenting, even lawnmower parenting, but for all you parents out there, there's an even newer one. Snowplow parenting, where they're just plowing through everything for them. Sixth grade English teacher Jordan Madura says she sees it constantly. I've definitely had times when I've spoken to a parent and the parent's just like, I, I don't understand why this test has to be this way. Like, isn't there a way that you can just, you know, uh, postpone it for whatever reason, be kind of asking for more things that I would expect that the kid could ask for. Do you remember when we talked about text structures? Child development expert Katie McPherson says whether it's helicopter, lawnmower, or snow plowing parents, all of it is based out of fear. We're really afraid of the world. Like, this is an unsafe place, so I'm going to hunker down, protect my babies, and I'm going to carefully engineer play dates club soccer schedules, junior high schedules, high school path to college, etc. And how exactly does it affect our kids? Take a look at these numbers. 30% of 18 to 34 year old men are living at home with mom and dad. Getting a driver's license and driving is not a priority. And many times after their first year of college, they come back home for good. Even though they can rock a 4.5 at ASU Barrett, they don't have the life skills to deal with a mean roommate, a mean professor. We spoke with several educators and experts and all of them saying the same thing. Failure is and always will have to be part of success. I think back on my life and the challenges that I faced have really helped shape me as a person and have really taught me so much that I would have learned no other way. That learning experience from conflict and resolution is not something we can plow them away from for the rest of their lives. When parents allow kids to fail, when parents allow kids to have a voice in their own family and their own schooling, we see social competence and maturity and resilience go way up. Another bit of advice, see yourself as a consultant instead of a referee. A referee is constantly intervening, and so that is another bit of advice from Katie McPherson. By the way, there is going to be a parent information night specifically addressing some of the issues in our story. It's happening next Wednesday from 6 to 7 over at Superstition Imagine Schools in the East Valley. Again, for parents out there who need that help in navigating through this new generation of kids, the iGen generation generation, which Kaylee, you and I oh, yeah. know very well yes. that our kids are growing up in this generation. Back to you. And you say you. parents who need the help. Don't we all need help? We just need friends to bounce things off of for sure. Carla, great information there. Thank you.